Hey guys, TC Mabe here with TC Gaming. I uh, wanted to talk to you real quick about an ACF thing with the horse that uh, has come up a couple times in the past and recently about playing animations for mounting and dismounting. And I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit about the horse in general. So if you go into your sample project and you locate the horse, which is under the, uh, you know, right there in the main level um, next to the mount there, if you highlight that and go to edit, ACF full mount BP, it'll bring you into your blueprint. And inside of here, um, if you were to go to the mesh and then locate the skeleton for this, right now it's called Proxy Horse 1, so if you browse to that asset, it'll bring you up, uh, it'll bring that up in the character's horse directory. <clears throat> Excuse me, that skeleton's right here. The skeleton, on that skeleton, there's a thing called a mount point. And that mount point is what's defined in your ACF rider component as the spot where you're going to land on that horse. So when you're playing animations, inside of the ACF full mount BP, there's a parent. Let's go to this event graph. There's really not much going on out here. If you go to the parent of this, which is ACF mount BP, that will pull up the actual code that when you start the interaction with the horse, that if you are already mounted, then you'll stop the mount. And if you're not already mounted, then you would start the mount. And this is what's in there now. If you want to play an animation that's related to this, then what you're going to do is you're going to put these trigger actions in here. So you would just pull out a pin and say, you know, trigger action, this is an ACF thing. And inside the trigger action, you just pick whatever the drop down value is. So in this case here, this is actions, and then just pick dismount. So once you have these defined in here as trigger actions, these are already in your tags that we added in earlier. Now, when you do your stop mount action, it'll go and play whatever this animation is. And in order to set this part of it up, you go into the ACF full anim BP for your character, and you're going to go into the ACF under class defaults under um, common actions, because this is an action you can do no matter what weapon you're holding and all that kind of stuff, right? So these are things that don't apply to specific items this is like I can do it anytime like drinking a health potion is a common action for example so if you don't already have an actions dot dismount or an actions dot mount in here you would just simply hit the plus key you're gonna go all the way down to the bottom until you find the new element that you've added you expand the element out and then go into the edit and just go down and pick actions and you can do one for dismount and one for mount once you have that part set up now you need to specify the montage that goes along with whatever your mount or dismount animation is going to be. So I didn't do the one for dismount uh, fully yet, so let me just work on the one that's down here for actions.mount. So in here I have a montage that's called rider mount front right montage. Now that montage is, if I hit the magnifying glass, it's out here in my horse anim set pro that was uh, from Malbers out on, or I think it's Malbers out on the um, marketplace. And this horse is from Malbers. It's a proxy skeleton that was given to Pask for this project from Malbers. And then you just have to buy his Malbers pack to get the, um, the materials and textures and animations and stuff to go along with this kit. But anyway, if you have this or something else, it'll work the same way. But basically, you go in here and find this. Um, the animation for your rider and, and for the mannequin and what I'm looking for is something called mount and I would want to go and find a mount where there's a dismount and a mount so if you look at the way that these are spelled there's underscore mount so I'm just going to go underscore mount and I'm on that rider mannequin directory and it's going to find all the different animations well if you find any animation that you want you just right click on it and say create montage and a montage and it'll create a montage that you can then assign in your ACF blueprint now, I picked the one for rider mount front right, and if I right-clicked on that and created it, I would get this montage. This montage is playing. I don't have to do anything special to this, but you do want to go in. I guess the only special thing is you go in here and you pick the slot that the montage plays in. Montages play in slots. And you want to go in here and pick the slot and say slot name is default group uh, full body horse. You want to set that on there. And now when you go back to your blueprint and you go and pick that montage, it would be assigned as the thing that happens whenever you trigger the action.mount. Now here's the problem. 
on the skeleton, as I said earlier, there's this thing called mount point. And that animation is a root motion animation, which means that it starts wherever the root is. But when you trigger the action in the ACF mount to start your mounting action, it basically teleports your character to this mount point. And then right after that, you're playing the action dot mount animation, which as you can see, is a root motion animation, which is moving your character up to that height. So we have to figure out a way to make that offset. And I'll show you what it looks like right now in its default configuration. If you go in here and you hit play, and you walk over here to mount onto the horse, watch what happens. He jumps up into the sky, and he mounts, okay? So it works. We're on the horse. Everything, you know, so far, but we want to offset this anim so that it plays correctly, or at least looks better. And there's probably a lot of different ways to do this. But what the easiest way is that I've found so far um, is to basically change the animation inside of the anim editor in here with key values. Now, other people have suggested that you could also right click on this and you could say re import uh, the asset, and or you could go out and uh, just bring it back in. When you bring it in, I guess there's a thing in here where you can actually use an offset value in the animation and you could offset the Z value to start the animation lower on the plane so that it actually, think about it this way, it teleports to the socket location for the mount, offsets by some negative value to bring it back to the ground and then plays it correctly and you end up on the horse at the socket mount whenever you're, when you're done playing your montage. Without going through all that extra trouble, you could just go in here to the animation. Now, we already have the montage set up, but we just go right into the animation for this. And what we can do is we can determine that we want to change where the root is on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start right here. Doesn't, actually, I'm going to start at the beginning. I usually like to rewind these back. So I've paused that. I'm going to rewind it back to the beginning. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at offsetting this root. Now... I have the root selected and I want to apply a key and when I make a key it's going to bring down the root curve now what I can do is I can go into the root curve and I'm looking at a translation for the Z value and if you pan over here a little bit there's a little curve editor I can say edit curve now in here I have a scrub timeline so I can go through here and it'll show me what this is doing and what we want to do is basically change where this curve is playing as far as the offset. So I want to take this first little key value right here. This is a marker that I can move around. And as you notice, as I'm moving that marker, it's also showing you over here where it's at. Well, you can also grab it this way and move it around. But what the, the long and the short of it is I want to take this root Z translation and I'm going to offset that thing by a value of negative 60. Okay, so negative 60 on the root. And actually, let me go back here real quick. Let me, let me delete this. I'll show you another way you can do this too. So when, as you're in here and you're playing your animation, let me move this timeline back some so we can actually see the whole animation on screen. As you're playing through this timeline, you can also say, okay, well, I want to go up here and you know change this so you can go down and move that around. And then when you say key and apply, it'll do the same thing with building this. So as soon as you move this, it'll give you a value. And again, you can go in here and just go to the translation for that on the Z value, edit the curve. And inside of here, we would go, see how, how this marker's down here now? We can go down here and we can move that around. I put it at negative 80, just moving it around. But I'm going to go back to the beginning of this. And I'm going to set this at negative 60. And you'll see that that marker has now moved. And I can scroll this timeline around where my negative 60 go. It's up, way up here. So I'm right-clicking and dragging down. And the uh, granularity, this is not great. But when I come all the way up there to this negative 60 line, I'm just right-clicking and dragging down. Negative 60 should show up in here on that blue line right there. And then what I want to do is I want to go to the end of the animation and just make sure that it's all at negative 60. Now, if you had different keys in here, so let's say I put another key marker in, that key goes to wherever it goes to. So, again, this is 
kind of the granularity of this, but see it went way down here. So I could take this key and highlight it. And I could also take this key and offset it and go up here, drag it around. So you could move different portions of this animation at different um, spots along the timeline as you need to. But what I'm interested in, again, is just making sure that this is all at negative 60 all the way across. I can leave that marker there if I need to, or I can actually just go here and delete that marker and just leave it that it goes negative 60 the whole way through. So once that's done and we've applied that um, to our animation here, we just save this. And if you play it, what you see now is that that root starts down lower. See how his legs are below the ground? But that's okay because we're going to be teleporting the character to the top of that other root. So let me go back in here now, and I'll show you with that little bit of an offset. When I go over here to interact with the character, I'll blow this up. When I go to interact with the horse, see it starts his animation. Let me go back and do it again. It's kind of it happens quick, but when I interact with him, it'll start his animation at that height. See, he reaches up, grabs a hold of the saddle and then jumps on there. Now, you know, as I said earlier, it's not the most elegant look to it, and there's probably other ways to refine it if you spend more time modifying those curves. And same thing with, like, this dismount action. You know, I, I just have it set up right now, and he's just jumping off the back of the horse. But I haven't tweaked that one yet. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of help as far as being able to modify and edit these um, values in here to do that right on the animation level and i think if you play around with that a little bit with modifying the curve on the translation you should be able to get a better result for that okay and actually before i uh, disconnect here um what i'll do is i'll show you another quick thing here too so in the sample if we go back here to the horse let's go over here um this is again if you have the malbers pack for those of you who have that, if you go in here to edit this and you go into the viewport, this proxy horse skeleton is the same as the one that's with uh, that came with Malbers, but it's just named differently. So what you could actually do, if you want to make your life uh, increasingly simple, is you go here to the sample, you go in here and find your horse anim set pro that came from Malbers, and he has different horses in here. You get rid of that filter. Um, so you can go down here to the meshes, horses, and he has, you know, all of his different things in here. So what you could actually do with this is you could take the horses that are in here, these two, the skeletal meshes. If you go in to this and just say skeleton, assign skeleton, you can go down here and find that proxy horse one skeleton, right? And these are the same Thing, so you don't have to worry about doing anything other than just saying accept and it'll move that horse onto that other skeleton that's a caught an auto save there and then you know save these things and once you go back into the acf full mount bp now on this mesh you can go over here and you can pick the um the one that's called horse so if i just type in horse and now you have that horse, so that's going to give you your more realistic looking horse. And the way that Malbers works, and see it's still using the ACF horse ABP because we moved that horse's mesh onto the proxy skeleton. Now in Malbers, if you look down through here, you have these different elements that make up how this horse is. So here's the material for the eye, here's the gray material, here's the horse white, horse uh, hair low gray. But see these are hair, hair gray and hair low gray, and this is the material for the horse. So if you go to this element and you go in here and type in horse, what you should find is all the different types of horse materials that are available. So if you just change this horse, oh, I'm sorry, that one right there, see that's PA? That is the low poly version of that. So let me do that again. I, so if you have, there's, he's got two different horse models in here and one of them, um, if you use the one for PA, those are the low poly versions. So let me go back up here and see if I can just find any other horse. So we'll just do gray one. So don't pick the PA unless you're using the low poly version of that. And I think there's a, back in that sample area there, there's a, see skeletal horse PA? That's your low poly version. Let me open it up real quick, I'll show you what I mean. See this is faceted. So those other materials are designed to work with a low poly horse. And this works the same way, same same skeleton. So if I wanted to use the low poly version, I would just go here, say skeleton, assign skeleton, go down here and pick my proxy horse skeleton, say accept, save that. I could go back into my full mount, go over here, and now I could hit um, 
again type in horse and there'll be a horse PA in here and under horse SK horse PA there's your brown horse and same thing you can change which one of those you want because those PAs are now that material will work on that horse does that make sense hopefully it does um, but again I just want to give you that and if you use it if you do it that way everything works out real easy and it all still looks good so I'll go back to horse get the original horse and again I can just change his element here to give him the gray version and there you go so we'll compile and save that and now when you go back out here you're gonna have that gray horse and they look a little bit better depending on what type of game you're going for but again there you go okay so that gets you uh, you know the thing there <clears throat> now this horse doesn't have a um, this horse doesn't have a saddle on it and you could put the saddle in there on the full mount BP you could add that in there. Um, what you'll want to do first, though, is make sure that you have the horse and him, all their different things. Um, each one of those things is a skeletal mesh. So if you go to animation, skeletal mesh in here, you could filter these down and find all the different parts. But I think, like, for example, here's one called SK Horse Armor. See, these also have a skeleton. So you'd have to assign this skeleton also to the proxy skeleton which I just saw horse where's that proxy horse one skeleton and then that would be able to get animated with your um, with your horse you know the one thing I never tried I guess we could try it real quick the um, you could probably make a blueprint and use the skeletal mesh horse armor I don't know if you could do it or not but you might be able to go in there on your horse and set that up as starting armor and uh, have it give attributes for that. And just for the fun of it, what we'll do is we'll create some horse armor out of that thing. I've retargeted it to that uh, thing, but just for the fun of it, let's go in here and do a new blueprint. We'll go in here and say uh, ACF armor. And there's ACF armor there. We'll select it. We'll call this um, ACF underscore horse armor. and unfilter the skeletal mesh thing there uh, the ACF horse armor if we go in here the mesh that's on that can be it was just called horse armor SK horse armor and in the ACF configurations for the class defaults, I think all you'd really need in here is just to say, you know, whatever the attributes were for this or whatever. But I think you could also just go in here and say what item slot it goes to. So let's just put it on item slot dot armor. And let's go to our full mount BP. He has an equipment component in here. And he has an item slot dot armor, so we could just say starting items and go in here and get the item class for ACF horse armor. And he gets one of those and it'll be automatically equipped. Let's just see if it does it. I've never done this. Yep, there you go. So there's the power of ACF right there. And what you could do is if your horse can be damaged and and uh, all that kind of stuff, you know, then you could assign these things as uh, different types of armor and give the bonuses to the horse or whatever because it's just another actor in ACF. That's pretty cool. I just uh, just found out something myself here in this in my own video. So anyway, my name is TC Mabe with TC Gaming. Thanks again for watching. I hope these videos are helping. And uh, you guys take care of yourself. Stay safe. I'll catch you in another video coming out soon.